Hello everybody, um, welcome to another video in the series of uh, constructing a Roundhouse George live steam locomotive kit. Um, today we're going to be temporarily fitting the body to the chassis, uh, having um, completed the fitting of the radio control gear onto the chassis in the last time. The body is fastened to the chassis with uh, at four points, two in the cab, in the rear of the cab, there, and also two on the end of the side tanks with screws here. And these screws, they fall into slotted holes in an upright flange in the front foot plate. So let's crack on and do that. And I'm, and I'm actually attaching the the nuts to the um, the front anchor points uh, in advance so we'll crack on with that being very careful here that's one point you have to take it over this one as well it needs to go a little bit more forward there and there okay now this is the bit here so and it needs to go so it's a bit tricky everything's a bit tricky there you go okay the front parts in rear parts on it's down okay so now we can concentrate on lining it up and fastening it okay we'll start with the mounting uh, screw there. I've got a longish screwdriver. Screw on the blue tack. Push it down. See if we can get it going in the hole. Yeah, it's gone through. Try and get a nut on the end. Yeah, there's one. Okay, that one's in. And then uh, we'll just tighten these up now. Get the spanner on. Okay, now the rear ones. Let's have a look at the front. So that's about right. I'll get it in uh, in here. Span it through there like that, in between the chassis, and then give it a turn. Okay, there's one. Okay. So there's the body on the loco. Put the drain plug back in the lubricator. See this that's the side of the cab against the servo on that side and then uh, as you see how much room there is there on that side and then at the back not a lot of space at the back but the various um, oil lines or gas pipes they're all not fouling oh you can see the one of the mounting screws there next to the lubricator oh and there, and there's the other one you can see the other one as well next to the steam regulator servo so it's all free and we're all just about free and we're happy there okay the last thing I want to put onto the loco before moving on to the tender is uh, the drawbar for the tender here it is and there's a short uh, crank uh, pin that goes with it let me focus in on that there you see the short crank pin this has to the drawbar has to go through a groove and this has to go on the other side somehow so I'm going to be messing around with that and I'll get back to you once it's on okay it may seem uh, for you guys just like 
as if it's a moment later but I can tell you I was messing around with ages for ages to trying to get this crank uh, screwed into the mounting with the buffer beam so my big tip for anyone that's building George is to fit the buffer beam before you fit the floor to the chassis otherwise you're going to be messing around for ages so okay I'm going to try and get my screwdriver in there now I'm going to have to do it from the other side to tighten it up a bit more start with the fingers first slowly get in there okay nearly there that's enough okay I've got the loco on its side because I'm going to be uh, tidying up these uh, servo cables the idea is that I'm going to tidy them up here put a, a tie rib around them make sure that they only come out of here perhaps as far uh, halfway uh, the length of the draw beam and uh, this this cover that neat that going to go on there and then the cables will be um, behind that cover what I've also done because to keep the both the servo um, cables when they're pointing out they look exactly the same I've just um, put a dab of red paint on one so I know uh, when when connecting it up to the, the the rest of the radio control gear in the tender I know which servos which and I'll do the same on the connector in uh, in uh, that's going in the tender so that's what I'm doing now so um, I'll get back to you once I've tidied the cables up and attached the 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 cover the chassis cover so there's the chassis cover on cables sorted there so I'll put it the right way up and then you can see it properly but uh, it was just one screw in each side in a hole that was already tapped uh, in the, in the chassis so that's all finished now so hopefully when I need to take the body off later for painting I don't have to do anything with the radio control uh, gear now it's just taking off the brass so now we're going to um, crack on with temporarily assembling the tender and the first part is to assemble the tender frame or attach sorry the tender frame to the tender body so we start by putting the tender body upside down putting the tender upside down and remember this is the back end of the tender frame sliding the front portion of the tender frame in here like that and uh, the tender frame is attached via the inside via the inside let's see if you can see that let me try and bring that up close then we need to line up the rear of the tender frame so that we can attach the M3 screws through the tender body into the tender frame cross member so that's what we're doing okay let's tighten it up first one in, go for the second one in this front hole uh, you mount a plain crank pin so we'll mount that in the hole and just nip it up with um, with a pair of pliers so there you go it's no problem then just give it a nip with a pair of pliers okay the brass the inner chassis there's the inner chassis we'll set it on the right place making sure that the holes, the holes for the axles are in line with the axle boxes and uh, we're going to start with at least one of the of the rear holes so we've got one of the screws in the hole now so we'll push that in there it goes hold it here turn the thing upside down get a nut put the nut on 
like that. And we'll do that then for uh, all four. Okay, all four of those nuts are now on, so I'll just uh, I'll tighten up those those screws. Now we can crack on to the next bit. Okay, let's drop the axles in like that, and then there is a an axle keeper plate, and that goes on top like this. And then there's two self tappers that need to go in there, and I'll pack, I'll go grab them and put them on. Okay, we'll tighten them up. Got my little uh, my roundhouse multi-tool screwdriver thing, so we'll give them a go. Next one, put that one in. So. Now I can see me putting some grease or something on them axles. Let's turn it upside down and see what happens. Okay. Turn it back upside down again. Okay, so now we're going to concentrate on the rear buffer plate. Okay, it's now time to fit the tender buffer beam. And similar to the front buffer beam on the locomotive, the overlay I've epoxied it to the to the steel buffer beam that uh, that you that you get with the kit. Couplings fitted as per the front one. So now it's a question of just mounting um, the rear buffer beam on here. So we'll crack on with that. There we go. Try not to damage uh, the paint on the buffer beam, of course. Okay, have a look, see whether that's in line. Turn it the right way up and present it to the camera. Let's see what we've got. So, there's the buffer beam. So it's a question of um, putting them both together now. I'll, I'll put the, um, the cab roof on by the way, I'll do that off camera and then I'll connect them up, put them on a bit of track so you can see uh, the overall picture of both together. For the first time, loco body and tender together. Let me try and do this one handed with the camera. So there it is, the loco in the brass. So the next job is um, just fitting the radio control gear in, in the tender, tidying up a few cables, and then um, we can take it out on the track with some stock behind it and see, uh, see what the valve gear timing's like. 